Hello YouTube. One of my favorite things about my job and just being at a university in general is dumpster diving. We constantly have professors moving around or coming and going, and every time there's a whole lab of stuff that needs to be either repurposed or discarded. And a lot of the older stuff gets discarded, like this thing, which is an old IBM typewriter, or at least the insides of it. This is basically what you used to use before we had word processors and computers. Uh, it just has a keyboard and a little tiny LCD screen, and you might type out a line of text and then have it printed. Um, the actual mechanics are very simple, which kind of led me into this project, because I really want to build a controller for it. Um, the original one died, and that's probably why it got thrown out. These things are actually remarkably reliable. The mechanics of this thing work just great, and it was probably a bad capacitor or something. I don't really feel like tracking it down, because it's a lot cooler to put it on the internet. Imagine a Twitter feed writer on a, you know, an old typewriter. It'd be pretty cool. So I'm going to try to follow you through this project as I do a few videos. Um, so this thing is basically just an overview of it. Um, this typewriter has four motors. Uh, two of them just control the position of the page and the cartridge. And then inside the cartridge are two. One that controls the ink ribbon itself, because every time you print a character you use up a little bit of ink and have to advance the ribbon. And the other one which spins around a daisy wheel. A daisy wheel is actually a, a bunch of little tiny stamps and each one has a single character it can print, and when it comes around, you spin the wheel, and when it comes around to the character you want, you stop it for just a second, and bring a hammer forward which slams against the page and prints a single character. Um, this is also where the sensor for this thing is. There's actually only one sensor in this entire device, and it senses where the wheel is. There are five positions on this wheel that are cut out and have a little hole that allows an opto sensor to detect it. So five times per rotation, I actually know vaguely where the wheel is. I say vaguely because it's just an on or off. I don't actually know which position I'm at. That I have to derive from how fast I'm spinning the wheel, because it's a stepper motor, I can tell, and what direction I'm going, because they're at an odd spacing, so you get sort of a quadrature in time. I'll go into that a bit more when I actually write the code for driving the motors and everything. For now, I'm just giving you a brief overview. Um, which brings me to the next thing, which is what's going to be the motor drivers. Uh, I haven't ordered any chips specifically for this project, so I'm just using a bunch of discrete NPN and PNP transistors to form half bridges. These motors are bi bipolar, which I'll show you how I discovered uh, in a later video, which basically means that I need to drive four different pins per motor, and I need to be able to control each of them to a high or low level, and at a fairly high voltage, especially relative to my controller. Um, which actually brings me to an interesting point. I'm using Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi has very few I.O. pins available, and all of them are 3.3 volts and can only drive a few milliamps. It definitely can't be hooked directly to a motor. So what I'm going to do is use shift registers, which will allow me to turn two I.O. pins into eight or more because I can actually put them in series. For all four motors, I'm going to need 32 I.O. pins, so I'm going to need four of these shift registers. And basically that'll let me control almost the entire typewriter with only two pins. Um, each one of these shift registers will be controlling two H-bridges. I'll go into a later video about what exactly an H-bridge is, but suffice it to say it takes a really small signal and turns it into enough to drive a motor. That will control each of these motors, and then I'll have a sensor feeding back, probably through an opto-isolator, to the Raspberry Pi. And that's basically all you need. Um, I'll try to get back to a later video for more detailed stuff, but uh, please keep viewing and I'll try to keep it interesting.